Xin chào các bạn đã quay trở lại với TV. Mình là Thanh Trúc đây và như Trúc đã nói cái tập trước thì mỗi tuần Tết TV sẽ có một bất ngờ cho các bạn và giữ đúng lời hứa của mình thì bất ngờ ngày hôm nay đó chính là khách mời của chúng ta là một nữ lập trình viên à, hứa hẹn sẽ mang lại một cái gì đó mới mẻ hơn cho các bạn và chút bật mí một tí về chị là chị đã rời bỏ cái vị trí là giảng viên ngành marketing cũng như thiết kế tại một trường đại học ở Austin tại Mỹ để dấn thân vào con đường lập trình cũng như là con đường công nghệ thông tin bắt đầu từ con số 0. Ngoài ra chị còn là một người phụ nữ tiên phong và kiến tạo nên một cộng đồng nơi những người phụ nữ có thể À, thỏa mãn như là theo đuổi cái mong muốn lập trình của mình và không ai khác đó chính là chị Ly Trúc founder của Women Big Tech và trước khi gặp chị Trúc thì các bạn đừng quên đừng quên nhấn nút subscribe bên dưới để tụi mình có động lực để động não suy nghĩ ra những cái bất ngờ lớn hơn trong tương lai và quan trọng hơn nữa là để cập nhật những thông tin công nghệ mới nhất liên quan đến các lĩnh vực đa dạng như là AI, game, mobile và các công nghệ lập trình khác và chỉ nhiên là từ những cao thủ công nghệ đầu trong ngành và không để các bạn tò mò hơn nữa thì chúng mình hãy cùng Trúc gặp chị Ly Trúc nha. Okay, so good morning. Uh, how are you today? Um, I'm great. Um, in social distancing, so I'm staying in most of the time, but everything is okay. Yeah. So I think that the audiences are like striving to know more about a female developer like you. So can you please introduce yourself a little bit to the audience? Um, sure. Um, I would say that I. I probably not consider myself um, a developer, but more like a tech advocate and community builder. Um, so right now, I'm the um, Google Women Tech Maker Ambassador for Vietnam, and I'm also the program founder, Women with Tech. It's the first um, inclusive and uh, diversity program for STEM training, and is endorsed and funded by the U.S. Consulate and supported by Google Women Tech Maker. Okay, so as far as I know, you did not plan to become a developer at first, but you have you have learned gradually, and ultimately you have found some common points with information technology industry, an industry that I find is more likely to incline to men. So I wonder what is the motivation behind your decision, or is there any opportunity you found that helped you chase your dream? I would say. Um Computer science uh, used to be a mystery to me, and I'm always during the past. Um, one of the things that I'm scared the most was actually some technical stuff because I don't understand what what it was. Um, looking through programming language, it was like another world to me, and it's kind of bothers me sometimes that I don't understand certain thing that has been causing and having so much impact in my life. Um, starting the time when I was in Boston teaching as a, a marketing faculty, and I got a lot of you know opportunities to attend um, seminars and tech conferences in in Boston with um, you know MIT and Harvard. They've been very active in hosting those events, and so coming to those events, I realized that um, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, for for everyone, not just for you know the people who actually study computer science, but for uh, for researchers, for marketers, for even you know like newbies who wants to use um, technical skill to advance their career. So I figure you know it's the right time for me that that I, I have to make this change you know like right away. And so I make a bold movement and then move back to Vietnam. And I realized that this is a good place to be because the tech scene in Vietnam has been growing so fast, and um, and I found the opportunity for for myself to learn and grow as fast as well. So um, and I think that I made the right decision um, coming back, and so that's why I can do a lot of things back here, um, and not only for for myself to grow, but to um, contribute to the community and you know make a, a big impact, especially for, for women tech. Um, when I first came back to Vietnam um, and joining those, you know, very kind of hardcore tech conference, mostly I'm the only one or two female <laughs> in the room. Um, and it's kind of caught me off guard. And I think, you know, like I need to do something. So, um, you know, it's just starting from that, that moment where I think you know there's a lot of programs for women around the world. Uh, women tech, you know, STEM training for for girls, and I haven't seen that very popular in Vietnam back 2018. 
And so I took the initiative and, you know, start doing um, the first uh, seminars to teach women basic web programming and it just start from there. Oh, okay, I see. So, for example, there are two circumstances, following your passion or just trying one field randomly. Have you ever thought that you were in the second case and you like didn't find any passion for programming at the beginning? Um, to be honest, I think following the passion is kind of a little bit of the hype, you know. Um, I think it's more like exploring different opportunities regarding, regardless of where you are. Um, and I think that's more applicable to me, that finding opportunities to um, finding my old path to, you know, fast forward my, my career. Um, I think programming um, eventually will be kind of like, you know, like another foreign language skill, like English and something like that in the future, um, regardless where you're, you're from different background, if you're marketers or you're in finance or, or any, any aspect of life. I think it's important to understand tech at the core because you know you see how how much of the the implication it, it does to our daily life. So at least you have to understand it why it is the way it is, so you can make your plan forward or plan your career on top of that. Um, and coding skill, programming, understanding the logic is at the core of it. So I think it's, it's fundamental, um, regardless of what what profession that you're you're choosing to pursue. Okay, so uh, regarding programming. So from your point of view, is there any barrier both in ability and psychology that really like preventing uh, women from experimenting with programming technology? And why programming, why technology is considered like is believed to be the male thing, not the female thing? Mm, I think it's been, there's been a lot of um, perception about genders regarding um, you know, if you're if you're a guy, you're better with logics. And if you're a girl, you're better with something more artsy or into any kind of caring professions like nursing. Um, I I don't believe in those. Even those, you know, there are different scientific uh, research and papers saying different things. But I do believe that everyone has all capability, and those capability um, don't necessarily, you know, like based on genders. So, you know, a guy can be really good being a nurse and a girl can be, you know, great data scientist or, you know, computer scientist and et cetera. Um, so the barrier to me is more like, you know, your, your, your mindset and um, the uh, cultural perceptions, especially in Asian countries where, you know, there's more expected of the gender roles. Women are more expected to do you know, more of the domestic work, um, you know, more of the caring burdens of the family's household and are not expecting to do something you know so comfortable so that is different from what their their parents or the previous generation expect them to be you know like they possibly you know pursue things that's more you know like um for for example a lot of asian parents that i know you know including my parents they want me to pursue something more you know like a marketing uh, career path or more like um, business administrations, um, doctors, lawyers, etc. But non, you know, like, hey, you know, you should become like, like an artist, or you should become something more creative. Or if you're a girl, I don't think, you know, it's, it's like a straight path for you to go into computer science. So it's more of the cultural preferences, more of the family, you know, guiding their kids to pursue their career. And at the core, it's more of your own perception and your own mindset. Mm -hmm. So in order to change all of those, you know, you have to start from all levels at the same time. Yeah. So the barriers here is like culture and uh, outdated family conceptions, right? Cultures, culture is covering all the family uh, perceptions, mm -hmm. social perceptions, as well as your, you know, like personal perception of yourself and the world around you. Okay. You know, like sometimes you, you think that um, you're not able, you're not capable to do certain things just because it's a guy thing or just because it's a gender-based thing. Uh, so first of all, you have to get rid of that mindset first. You gotta know that, you know, if you don't try, you will never know what your capability is. If you don't try to learn a new skill, 
you will never know if you can do it or not. So you have to lift that out of your mind so that you can start learning something and start progressing. Okay, so I know an idiom called like nothing can succeed without the help of a teacher. So do you have any like secret mentor that have you that motivated you throughout your journey from the very first step until now? Um, I don't. I wouldn't. I would say that not like a specific person, but throughout my journey on this 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 path, I've met you know awesome people who've guided me along the way. Uh, sometimes not necessarily technical stuff, but more like, hey, you know, Leah, you can do this. Um, just give it a try. You know, like. And you know you're you're one of the first few people who to, to do this, so you just keep on trying. So those motivational, um, you know, sharings and um, and and kind of you know like kind of help me uh, push my limits and help me moving forward. Um, not specifically, you know, one person, um, but I, I've met so many amazing people along the way. Uh, some people come come from you know like community uh, builders as well, just like myself, who have done uh, a lot of amazing work ahead of me. Um, sometimes, you know, is is my um, acquaintance or my contact that I've met during the um, seminars or workshop that I've been to, or sometimes, you know, just, just on online, you know, like learning from like tutorials and so many other things. Um, so I think like right now, um, your mentor can be just anyone, you know. If even your peers, your coworkers as well. It's not limited just to one particular person that you're calling a mentor. Yeah, it's like uh, an emotional support. Yeah, and and also the attendees who who comes and uh, support our program. Um, every time that they come back to me and they ask me about questions of how they can pursue their career further um, after attending my events, uh, I feel it's very rewarding. Because you know, like now that they're, I'm like the program actually brings some some meaningful um, reinforcement and motivation toward themselves. Um, so those actually come back and motivate me to do more more things for the community. Okay. So we're gonna change the topic a little bit. I would like sure. to know more about women mid tech. Can you clarify the definition of women mid tech and uh, what are the current activities of women mid tech in your community? Um, so when I first um, found this community, this program, I've seen a lot of uh, women in tech uh, organization community has been very active in Vietnam, but none has been very technical at that time. So um, and I also want to want to say, hey, you know, this is the woman in tech community. It's just another one. I want it to be like you know more like welcoming as well as you know some practical technical knowledge that you can learn right away after every workshops and so um and and with the you know female technical trainers as well that's one of my vision um because um it's very rare to have the whole team um um, majority was a woman like right now you know I have front-end developer I have a back-end very strong technical person and I also have UI UX and I myself lead the program so I think it's, it's also you know create this role model for other um, women and, and, and men to see that hey you know like we're together we can do something different that's never been before in Vietnam that is you know this woman's role model we can do it, you know. It's Vietnamese women who can, who can code, who can, you know, talk about technical issue stuff, who can representing Vietnam in different aspects and so much more. Not just, you know, being beautiful or not just, you know, like um, the, the average, you know, what expectation of society on women here. Okay, so um, uh, are there this, are there any difficulties when you are persuading or calling for a sponsor? And how did you do to overcome that? As long as you're showing people that what you're doing is meaningful and have impact, and you know, like helping other people uh, transform their life, their career, um, then more and more people will join in and, and join forces and help you to you know move this forward. So it's just the beginning when things are hard, but right now I think it's, it's going well.
that people are starting to know about the community. Um, people are more involved and people are asking me. I think it's reaching to the point that sometimes I feel a little overwhelmed of my capacity. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it's a good sign that I need to, you know, like expanding this a lot more in my team so that there are more people coming in to help. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think it would be tough for a nonprofit organization to manage the members, especially for large-scale projects or programs. So, how many members in your team, or is there any other units accompanying you? Um, right now, I would say we have six people in our team. Uh, four is for key trainers, technical trainers, and then two and more coordinators. Um, but we're trying to keep this lightweight like that on purpose because we can have more of the freedom to choose to do um, what we think is needed uh, instead of running a large corporation with, you know, like hierarchies and small teams here and there. Um, at the same time, you know, budget wise, I think it makes sense to have a small team uh, to start. Um, but right now, I think we're good with six people um, and with, you know, like volunteer and supporters. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember last time when we do this um, original pitching contest for diversity and inclusion, um, we got on almost the impossible jobs to pull all those contests within two months. But we do appreciate that at that time we have people from different um, organizations and the consulates and women empowerment club and everyone come in and join and help. Uh, so we can pull that through. So that time, our including volunteers as well, that time our team was like almost 30 people. And that some people are also from Thailand, from Myanmar, from um, Malaysia, and so many other Southeast Asian countries who's on my college as well. So I'm very grateful that, you know, that we can pull those efforts together, join effort together into building something that seemed almost impossible um, so something like that makes me feel, you know, very, um, very happy and very honored that what I'm doing at the moment. Okay, so after hearing your sharing about Women Mid Tech, I can feel like uh, I can feel your enthusiasm for it. And I wonder how do how do you like maintain and keep that enthusiastic fire for Women Mid Tech? And what makes you proud the most when talking about it? I think like, you know, like helping people, you know, like that um, they they starting to put on very good reviews for me uh, without me asking or they, you know, like just joining and uh, joining our community without me having to, you know, advertise it or spending any money on advertisement. So I want to see it as, you know, organically, you know, how people are really interested in what I'm, what, what our program are doing. Um, and uh, is the numbers really shows uh, you know how many people decide to you know pursue their career after joining a tech career after joining our workshops how many people actually you know pick up new skill technical skill uh, after a certain seminar that we host and um, you know like when when media and, and other entities come approach us we started to realize that you know we're getting momentum here that more people are knowing about our community and so you know it's just slowly uh, having that ripple effects and slowly you know like more more and more people um, got involved and more people being aware of helping uh, aware of this program and, and join in and also got benefits and helping the community at the same time so it's gonna start in slowly but but it's, it's getting there um, probably in the next two or three years hopefully Okay, so do you have any advices for the other girls who want to become developers in the future, but don't know where to start? Um, I think just just start, you know, just get your hands dirty. Okay. Um, just pick something that you got interested in and just start learning. Because if you keep, you know, like worry, uh, keep thinking and never, you know, take actions, it will never happen. You know, we just, we're just going to stand still. But if you really want to uh, make a difference in your career or learning new skill, you just have to get your hands dirty and pick something and study and learn mm-hmm. and code. Yeah. Okay. So from your own experience, how how does it take a person with no like information technology background to become a level that they can create a product, for example, a web or a game? 
it really depends on you know like how how you how you define that you know like what kind of website or what kind of game you you want to create like for myself it only took me you know a few weeks to do that that basic game um uh and you know like a few months to you know building you know like a, a working website um but during my workshops you know i'm turning everything down into the bare bones so that my attendees can build basic framework for the website and that's within one or two workshops so you know like doing basic html css and a tiny bit of javascript so it really depends on you know what your definition is but i, I do believe that when you really get your hands dirty and start doing programming the result and your achievement can just come within you know a few days or a few weeks you know like basic websites or basic you know demo products so it's really up to you um mm -hmm. i want to add in this this very good thing about the technical um the tech industry is that because technologies constantly um change so whatever you learn right now is kind of on bar with other mm -hmm. software engineers who have been in the industry for so many years so it's just a just a matter, you know, like how fast and how willing you are to learn new technology, mm. because everyone's basically on the same bar of of learning. Like they also for software engineering, with you know senior one, they have to constantly update the new framework and new technology at the same pace, whatever has come out. And for you, the newbies, you gotta leverage that um, that rapid change in technology adaptation and stuff like that learning new framework learning new technologies learning what's updated out there um it's just a matter of how fast you can learn and how determined how ambitious you want to learn things um that's a very good low entry of barrier for some newbies to come into the tech industry i would like to add okay can you give like three advices for those who don't choose programming like the essay majors or those who learn programming by themselves? Um, the advice, I think there's a lot of advice out there. Um, there's a lot of tutorial, a lot of online courses, a lot of in-person boot camps. Just one thing, you know, just start, just really do it. And then you will see the results. And then during the process, maybe you realize that maybe this is not for you, maybe this is not for me. Um, and you can start, you know, exploring different options around that. But don't be discouraged if you're just starting out within, you know, a few months. Give it time to sink in. Sometimes, like six months or mostly a year. Um, and some, sometimes about technologies, you know, certain certain things. Like when I start pro learning React Native, I was like, there's so many things that I don't understand, but I just have to do it. And then after a while, then I would start to realize, aha, now I understand why it is. So you don't have to put yourself in a position where you have to understand everything mm -hmm. at once. It's not going to happen, even for developers, experienced one. You just have to really do it. And then, you know, come to a certain point of time, then you will understand why it is the way it is. But the matter is, you have to create it in order to understand. But if you just, you know, keep saying about it, if you just, you know, like, just watching tutorial or just, you know, going to tech seminars, so not really do anything on your own, you will never able to learn. So mm -hmm. just get your hands dirty and start learning something. Okay, so um, like, do you want to leave some messages to the male developers who colleagues are female? Um, I think, you know, like having the, um, the, the support, you know, like allies from, from, from different genders are very important in bringing the gender gaps uh, smaller. Um, and especially here in our tech scene in Vietnam, where there's, you know, very few women joining this, uh, this journey. Um, I hope that, you know, the, the work environment uh, for, for, for women, uh, especially from, from, you know, from, from this from this guy team, if there is a woman or two in your team, you know, just treat them as if you're treating your friends, as if you're treating yourself or, or your male college, not tr treat them as if they're, they're a woman, you know, just treat them as, you know, like as your, your coworkers and that's it. Just don't, um, don't, you know, place in that because they're, they're women, they tend to be, you know, less technical or 
they have you know other things that they worry about, so they won't be efficient at work. That's not true. So just just treat them equally. Um, and then you know maybe if you you have more technical skill set and then the newbies come into your company, maybe you know like help them uh, share with them the knowledge, just like a like a coworker's regular one. Don't let genders come into the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I, I treat her because I treat her differently because she's a woman. Just just don't do that. And then on top of that, I think if uh, they themselves have have uh, sons or daughters, you know, um, it's very important that, you know, like during, you know, this this educational process um, of, of raising a child, if you have a son or a daughter, just just show them that, you know, there's, there's no such discrimination for for girls or boys to learn things, but just let them learn the way they think they, they want to learn. You know, like, you know, like boys can play uh, dolls and toys. Girls can be, you know, play Legos and doing codings and other programming stuff. Just remove that gender uh, bias out of raising your kids. Um, and then, you know, starting from the family. Um, I have some of the female coworkers of mine um, who are very fortunate to have a supporting spouse because, you know, especially in Vietnam, when if you have your wife working in the environments where it's all guys, mm -hmm. of course, there's certain resistance. So I, I asked for understanding from, mm -hmm. from, the, from the husband's perspective that, you know, like you understand that, that your, your wife is going out there, you know, like pursuing her professional career and, you know, to um, slowly change this. Uh, gender gap issue in tech. So if you're a very supporting spouse, you're understanding and you're, you know, kind of support her emotionally to help her advance more in, your, in their, her career instead of, you know, like pulling her back and say, hey, you cannot do that because there's a lot of guys and you're not suitable to be in that environment. So it's, again, you know, it's like I said, you know, there are multiple layers in order to make things different for, for women in the tech industry. And it's all start from, you know, like society, from society level, from the family level, and from the personal level. So, yeah, I can go on and on about this, but it's all come down to those matters. Okay, so this is the last question. So uh, after hearing all your thoughts and opinions, so honestly, I have to admit that I really admire you, like a female developer who is brave, resilient, determined, and passionate, of course, passionate about uh, the IT community and society. So um, once again, thank you so much for joining with Codex TV today. So I think that both female and male developers, after watching this video, really appreciate your determination and contribution to the IT community. So uh, from the bottom of my heart, so I have to say that you have shown that you are capable of doing great things. So I wish you the best of luck in your career as well as for your grandchild, Women Mistake, and hope to see you soon in the future. See ya. All right, thank you very much for having me. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, cảm ơn các bạn đã dành thời gian xem tập Project TV ngày hôm nay. Các bạn thấy phần trình bày vừa rồi, phần chia sẻ vừa rồi của chị Liên Trúc như thế nào? Liên Trúc thì cảm thấy chị là một người phụ nữ rất là bản lĩnh, luôn tin tưởng vào khả năng của mình, cũng như là kiên định với những mục tiêu chị đưa ra và ở chị luôn lúc nào cũng có là một cái năng lượng rất là tích cực đặc biệt là dành dành cho những nữ lập trình viên khác nếu các bạn cũng cảm nhận như chút thì đừng quên like share để lan truyền cái năng lượng tích cực này cho nhiều người hơn nha và cuối cùng thì nếu như mà các bạn muốn tới tv khai phá thêm những chủ đề mới nào nữa thì hãy comment bên dưới cho tụi mình biết và xin chào và hẹn gặp lại